Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Again, we're going to be talking about Auto GPT. Um, in our previous video, we really just went through setup, kind of ran into a few walls, and uh, tried to run it once or twice. Uh, this time around, I actually did a bit of research, a bit of reading, hard to avoid nowadays. Um, and so we're going to run it through some tests. We're going to talk through a, a few of the features that really uh, surprised me. Um, but I do have to start this off with uh, the tagline right here, an experimental open source attempt to make GPT-4 fully autonomous. Uh, experimental attempt. Uh, this is really to tone it down because um, when you look at social media, we're talking about these almost sentient AIs going out into a World Wide Web, writing new code, doing things. And while there's a lot of potential and a lot of excitement about what this can do, um, it's still very early. Just like in our last video, even when we asked it just to Google a bunch of uh, laws and, and legal research, uh, it was far, 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 far from perfect. So uh, the, the auto GPT bot that got sent out to try and destroy the world isn't going to get very far. <clears throat> so saying that expectation, um, auto GPT did update a little bit, 0.2.2. We did 0.2.1 in our last video, and supposedly 0.3 is going to bring new features. Um, I would suggest if you are curious to just Google some of these like hosted free options. There's lots of these out there. Um, I'm looking at godmode.space uh, where you just type and you can see how it works. Just um, a few examples of how it runs because realistically, I don't think it's going to do a lot of heavy lifting, at least not right now. So. Uh, if you're curious and you want to do this and you don't want to follow along this video and whatever cheesy idea I come up with and you want to put something cool like, I don't know, destroy the world or make the world a better place, um, then then try it out yourself. Go, go online. There's lots and lots and lots of these out there. Okay, um, so... Uh, a couple different things. Uh, first of all, I wanted to go through this environment file. Now, in our last video, uh, I kind of zoomed out because obviously this is where you put your API keys and secrets, and you don't want to look too deep into this. But uh, I found it much more interesting to go through uh, these settings than our previous exercise of trying to just pick apart the code uh, in little bits and pieces. So uh, the very first one is already very interesting. And this is what I want to try today, um, being able to execute local commands. So in our last video, we used an open AI API key. So it had access to GPT 3.5 and 4. Uh, the other thing we gave it access to is down here, Google API key and the search engine ID. So I'm going to give that to AutoGPT again, but uh, that limits its ability to do things. So, um, <clears throat> you know, when I said do research, do legal research on a legal problem, it had some ability to do so, engaging with Google, great search engine, of course, great source of knowledge, and then GPT to try and understand it. Um, we saw other bits and pieces. Uh, I know I mentioned Dolly or Stable Diffusion. Those will allow you to generate images, but I didn't go much further than that because uh, I was doing it on the fly and I didn't, I wasn't even aware of it. Uh, this big one, this one is big for me, um, being able to execute local commands. And what I found out on searching up more about AutoGPT is that it can write, well, it can write all sorts of code, but in particular, it can write Python code and then execute it right on your local computer. So, uh, for example, um, instead of just creating these text files with 
uh, you know, the, the research it might come up with, I might ask it to put out a CSV, you know, a table, a chart that you can open in Excel. I might ask it to fetch files locally from my computer. Probably not the smartest idea on my main computer, but um, you can do those things. You can ask it to access uh, other tools in your computer. Now, it'll probably have a hard time understanding a whole lot of your own code and custom code, but uh, major packages, um, being very direct about what files to open and, and what to access and maybe even doing things on your computer. So for example, I might ask it to write a script to move my mouse around to keep my computer awake. Um, so being able to uh, execute, write Python code and then execute it is is huge. It, it, it is absolutely huge. Um, and so how you would enable this is you would uncomment this out and you would put true, allow, sorry about that, allow it to execute commands. Um, over here, restrict to workspace. This one makes a lot of sense. You don't want file operations to go outside of your, uh, outside of that folder, you know, start deleting your precious family photos or whatever. Um, there are other files here, uh, let's not, care too much about that open AI LLM uh, you're probably going to want to use the right models so uh, if you want to be uh, 10 or 15 times cheaper you use GPT 3.5 if you want the latest and greatest GPT 4 um, memory this one was one that puzzled me a little bit uh, I was very excited to, to look at what pine pinecone is and um, it was new to me when I was looking at the video and, and just looking at OpenAI, not OpenAI, uh, AutoGPT for the first time. But it seems like it's a way for you to have long-term memory. It is a uh, vector-based storage. So you're placing files, text uh, along a continuum and being able to fetch it very quickly based on its, its location relative to other ones. Um, what I found uh, when I was just Googling it and Redditing it is that it, it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, I originally thought some of the poor results in our previous video might have come from the fact that I didn't use Pinecone, that I, I didn't use any sort of uh, third party memory. Um, and maybe that's why it wasn't remembering stuff from the start. But it seems like, at least for small scale projects, not world domination, that just using local memory, um, just using local files will work fine for the most part. So um, I'm probably going to take their word at it because I think that makes a lot of sense to me. And for our particular project, I don't really care, but they opened up uh, different types of memory as well, different types of being able to fetch documents or, or files they saw before. Uh, image generators, there's Dolly, there's Hugging Face, there's uh, Stable Diffusion. Hugging Face will give you uh, access to some of the other models that you might want to use, not just you know OpenAI's Dolly, not just plain vanilla stable diffusion, but if you want, you know, uh, a cartoon based, a manga or anime based model, you can use these. <clears throat> um, audio to text, uh, being able to interact with your GitHub, this sounds like bad ideas. Web browsing, this is important. Uh, text to speech, there's a bit of being able to read out loud and Twitter. So that gives you a good idea of what it can do. And what I'm really excited to try today is executing local commands. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I So just like before, I just downloaded the newest version. I set up a virtual environment, installed everything. Uh, I hit an issue that I remember I had before. Uh, the file auto GPT JSON does not exist. Uh, you just create a blank one in your auto GPT directory and you're fine. Uh, last time I was able to just do it with moving to admin, I think, just opening command prompt as an admin, but oh well. Uh, Python M auto GPT. Perfect. 
So just like before, we're going to name this bot uh, Python GPT. Um, okay, so now we gotta give it a role and a couple of goals. What I wanted it to do is to um, Google, uh, okay, an AI designed to track gold prices from the internet at uh, gold, the current price of gold and to document it in a CSV file. Nice and simple. So uh, first goal is to find a reliable source for the price of gold. Um, write a Python script to uh, scrape that source daily. Execute the Python script. I think that's pretty simple. Um, it's not going to need to go through the World Wide Web and go through a lot of sources. I just want to see how uh, Python execution looks. So click enter again. It's using local cache as memory. That seems to be fine. It's going to use Chrome to search. Oh, and by the way, uh, obviously I was showing you a uh, environment template that was blank. Uh, I did put in the right API keys, the right um, settings to make this all work. Okay, so I love how this is set out. They give you your, their thoughts, reasoning, plan, and criticism. Uh, they try and criticize themselves. So you need to find the source for gold. They'll do a Google search. Um, Google is a good starting point. That all makes sense. And then they're going to evaluate the search result, write the script, execute the script. So I will authorize that, and I will authorize the next 10 steps because I think that makes a lot of sense. They <clears throat> found a whole bunch of sites and it's just gonna scrape through. I'm realizing right now that I'm probably using GPT-4 so it's gonna cost me little 10 times more than GPT-3.5 for such a simple issue but that's fine. All right, uh, I'm gonna stop rambling. I'll start recording, but I won't be talking for a little bit while it executes. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to stop this video now. And again, it outlines the fact that, you know, this is not ready for prime time. But uh, I was pretty happy overall. Okay, so first off, let's see where we ran into an issue. Um, it's going to keep looping itself because uh, every time it's trying to um, write this script, Python uh, import requests, beautiful soup, blah, 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 blah. It'll review the Python script. But every time it tries to write, you can see that this workspace, this is where it's supposed to put its text files, Python files, whatever, in here. Uh, there is nothing. So when it runs, naturally, it, it gets, uh, it, it can't run it because it didn't actually write the file. Um, and it'll keep looping because it'll say, why isn't it working? It'll try and write another one. Why isn't it working? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's just not smart enough to realize that the, the problem is there is no code for it to actually run. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I just glancing at this, this uh, may not be functional or perfect code, but um, it, it seems to hit the right bits. Uh, 
I don't know why they crunch it all up. Maybe it's just for view, but um, you're importing requests to make uh, requests. You get beautiful soup. They found the right URL, and then they're going to parse the content by finding the right table. You know, getting getting the the date time, blah blah blah, printing out the 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 data and saving it to a file. So CSV writer as well. Um, and then you can run the script daily using a scheduler like cron um everything it said makes absolute sense it's just very unfortunate that it can't actually write or run code now this would be an awfully boring video and it kind of is uh but it looks like i'm not the only one with this issue in fact we had the same issue before in our previous video where it wasn't writing to text files properly now again last time using admin mode for command prompt seems to have fixed it but in this case you know they're asking it to fix itself um they have these new files uh realistically i yeah, this is the newest version. It's a clean install. It should be able to fix itself. Uh, it should be able. It should work out of the box um, once it gets more mature. Uh, I I'm not relishing the idea of trying to figure it out myself, but it seems to have given us decent enough code right here, so that if I keep running these commands, it's kind of stupid. Um, but otherwise, pretty pretty interesting uh okay so um the other thing that i found out later on is i kept thinking that there's y y uh and the number of steps and then n to exit and i thought those were the three but you can enter feedback to say um auto gpt is not writing files into its workspace, please fix. So you can guide it correctly. Um, and that would have come in handy in the previous one, where instead of n trying to exit it, I would be able to enter feedback and direct its research. Um, I am going to stop here because I think we get the main idea here and in it, it should be able to run the script. That's basically all we care about here, that it's able to spit it out and then it should be able to run it right here. Um, very unsatisfying, but I don't want to spend another half hour trying to figure this one out i'd much rather wait a couple of days for the next version to crop up so i guess i'll have to leave you guys on this cliffhanger and hope that there's another version that comes out and we can play around with it again and um now that i know this works we can think of something more substantial maybe writing an app from scratch maybe getting the idea and then writing the app from scratch as well so stay tuned next time and we will tackle this problem once again. Thanks for watching.